Hello there and welcome to the Biotech Girl channel. In my previous videos I have mentioned how the DNA has sequences called genes that are first transcribed into an RNA molecule and then it gets translated into a protein sequence and that uh, the genetic code actually refers to the set of rules in which this is accomplished. Well, I feel like this requires a bit more explanation, so here I am. Let's go through this together. Whenever we start discussing the significance of the DNA and the genetic code, we have to mention the sequences. So let's say that this is the sequence of the DNA molecule. Since the DNA sequence is double-stranded, I will now write down the complementary strand of this sequence. And now let's say that this strand serves as the template strand for building the RNA molecule. So the RNA molecule would be complementary to the template strand, and it would be nearly identical to the coding strand, with the only difference being that instead of the timing, it has uracil in the sequence. And then from this sequence of the RNA, we can get the protein sequence in the following manner. First, it is easier if we group the nucleotides into trinucleotides, which represent the so-called codons. These codons correspond to particular amino acids, which are the building blocks of the protein. The non-ambiguity of the codons leads to one codon only corresponding to one type of amino acid. So to actually get the protein sequence from this RNA transcript, you'll have to memorize this table. <laughs> I'm joking. You will typically be given this genetic code table. The only things you may need to memorize are the four very important codons, one of which is always the first codon in an RNA molecule, coding for methionine, and the other three are the stop codons, which are indicating that the protein should end there. It will become less confusing when I use the examples, so let's explain the table first. The table is basically an easy and straightforward way to find out which codon of the RNA labeled in red color correspond to which amino acid labeled in green. To do this, we need to locate all three nucleotides of the codon. We can find the first nucleotide in one of these four rows. Then we can look for the second nucleotide in these four columns. And then it's easy to spot the third one. Let's try using our example. So the sequence of the codon is AUG. We can find the first nucleotide A here, so we only focus on this row for now. Then we find U, which is here, so we see that AUG is here. And what a coincidence, our first codon is the start codon. <laughs> so let's write that down. So our first amino acid is methionine, or simply put M. Then we go to the second one, UCG. The first nucleotide is U, so we only focus on this row for now. The second one is C, so our codon has to be in this section. And we can see that UCG corresponds to serine, which we will label as S. Maybe pause this video now and try to finish the protein sequence yourselves. And I hope you got the same magnificent letters as I did. And I also hope I didn't make any mistakes myself. <laughs> If you're confused about what the last codon means, it basically only indicates that the sequence stops before this codon, and there's nothing after this, because UGA corresponds to no amino acids, so the slot remains empty. So our example sequence is MSDT, that's all. But remember that typically the protein sequences are much, much longer, with hundreds or thousands of amino acids. Thank you for watching until the end. I hope I managed to clarify the role of the genetic code in the protein synthesis and how to properly read the codon table. You can comment below if you have any questions and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Stay safe and stay curious.